It's time for all things High Republic. Fa la 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 la. Phase two secrets I've been knowing. Fa la 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 la. Got to hang my starlight beacon. Fa la 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 la. So much fun, so strap your seat and fa la 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 la. Welcome to the High Republic Holiday Spectacular. For a thousand generations of Jedi Knights, the Guardians of Peace and Justice. Hello, High Republic friends, and welcome to the High Republic Holiday Spectacular! A holiday spectacular so grand, we couldn't afford it. Seriously, there were gonna be explosions and dancing animals, all sorts of death-defying lightsaber tricks, and a special appearance by the Force Ghost of Yoda. But then we looked at the calendar and like half the staff had already left for the break, so we decided to do the best show we could with what we had, but hey, at least you got to hear me sing. And we got a tree and a starlight beacon ornament, so we're winning! Now, I know most of you have been nose deep in the latest and greatest in the higher public, but if you haven't dipped your reading toes into the phase two pool yet, don't worry, we've got you covered with this handy dandy reading guide to get you all caught up. And remember, there will be a pop quiz next episode, so be sure to take notes. Now, before I get started with this list, I just want to remind you that any book you decide to start with in phase two is the right book to start with. However, if you're interested in a reading list of which order you should read the stories, we've got you covered. Kicking things off with George Mann's Quest for the Hidden City. A Pathfinder team that is charting its way across the galaxy goes missing, and it's up to Jedi Knight Solandra Show and her Padawan Rupert Natani to find them on the planet Gloam, a world infested by monsters. And once you put that down, get ready to crack open Path of Deceit by Tessa Grattan and Justina Ireland. In the book, set 150 years before Phase 1, you'll meet Star Wars Cross lovers, Padawan Kevmo Zink and Marta Rowe. You know, as in Markeon Rowe, as in the Eye of the Nile. Can these two live a life of happiness and star peace? Or will their different upbringings and beliefs eventually drive them apart? After that Shakespearean space story plays out, move on over to Zoraida Cordova's Convergence, where the two warring planets of Iram and Arano put their forever war on hold for a wedding. Love really does conquer all, y'all. But when an assassination attempt on the newlyweds is foiled, Jedi Gela and Atai must team up with handsome playboy Axel Greylark. Will these two oil and water opposites learn to work together to save two warring planets and more importantly, the wedding of the year? But that wasn't enough. Daniel Jose Older's Higher Public Adventures is chronicling Padawan Sav Malagon's time with legendary space pirate Maz Kanata. And because we all know what a party Maz is, you'll definitely want to check out these comics from Dark Horse. Speaking of comics, Kevin Scott is helming the all-new High Republic series from Marvel following Jedi Vildar Mac in the holy city of Jeddah. But the light is beginning to go dark when Vildar gets caught up in a murder mystery involving the Guardians of the Wind. Now that's a bounty of High Republic phase two goodness to immerse yourself in. So what are you waiting for? Get reading! After the show's over, duh. Because you don't want to miss this. And by this, I mean a behind-the-scenes look at how the new High Republic comics are coming to life thanks to our friends at Dark Horse. My name is Matt Dreyer. I'm the Star Wars editor for Dark Horse Comics. My name is Sanjay Darwat. I'm an assistant editor here at Dark Horse Comics. I'm in charge of making sure everything is within continuity and as good a story as it can possibly be. And I basically help out on all our cool Star Wars books. I have been a Star Wars fan since I was three years old. I'm old enough to have seen Jedi in the theaters. Actually, part of the reason that I came to Dark Horse in the first place was because of Star Wars. One of my earliest Star Wars memories is reading a Dark Horse Star Wars comic. Star Wars Back with Dark Horse is special. For 20 plus years, it was the home of Star Wars in comics. And over the years, they've helped create some of the most important characters along the way for different eras and give fans another experience in the Star Wars universe. You know, I really think High Republic is a great series for parents and kids to read together because the parents are going to remember when Star Wars was a dark horse and the kids are really going to enjoy all the new High Republic stuff. I'm in love with the idea that somewhere the High Republic Adventures is somebody's first foray into the High Republic or possibly even their first foray into Star Wars because it's a brilliant introduction to the universe and it is so much fun. Fans can expect a whole lot of action, space pirates, Padawan shenanigans, all the things that they love about Star Wars. The story centers on Sav Maligan, who readers are used to her as a Jedi Knight. We're getting to explore Sav as a Padawan. She's only a teenager in this story. Fans are going to love seeing her grow and change and even mature a little bit over the course of the book. Daniel's introducing a lot of new characters to play with Sav in this little sandbox. 
definitely keep an eye out for Maz Kanata. We only got to see a little bit of her in The Force Awakens, but we're showing much more of what she was doing way, way, way before she even met any Skywalker. And Dexter Jetster makes an appearance. It was pretty cool to see the world before Dex's diner. What really excites me about The High Republic is that it's a brand new setting for people to tell stories in. It lets people investigate corners of the galaxy that they've never seen before, or see wild new ways of using the Force, or how the Jedi operated back during the early days of the Republic. One of the other things I love about the High Republic is the collaborative effort across all the different groups working on it. It's not just a show. It's not just a single book. It's an event that's been going on for so long now. There's the years of love that Daniel Jose Older has brought, and Tony Bruno, the artist, has picked up on the enthusiasm that lives in Daniel's scripts and has just brought his own life to it. So it's just a really great piece of storytelling. In the 2023 Free Comic Book Day, we're going to be featuring a epilogue story from phase one of the High Republic Adventures. The Free Comic Book Day issue really provides kind of a nice little send-off to phase one, giving readers one last time with their favorite characters from there before we hop into phase two and hit the ground running. Going from a fan of Star Wars to now working on Star Wars has been one of the more surreal experiences of my life. To be back in that Star Wars realm again is incredibly exciting for all of us. If I could tell fans one thing, it's that if you enjoyed our first issue of High Republic Adventures, stick around, because we've got a bunch more cool stuff coming up in the next issues. Hey y'all, and welcome to Phase 2 of The High Republic. We've got all new heroes, all new villains, and an all-new roundtable. So let's dig in. Today, we are thrilled to welcome author Zoraida Cordova, author Charles Soule, and Lucasfilm Publishing Editor, Emily Jouin. Hi, all Happy holidays! Same to Hi. you. Now, Emily, since you're new to the show, I wanted to start with you. From an editorial perspective, how do you see this phase fitting in with what's come before? Yeah, so since the phases were set up to mirror the approach of the Skywalker saga, Think of them as the prequels, meaningful stories that connect to already established storytelling. But because they tell the beginning of the story, they're an all new jumping on point, if you haven't read any Higher Public before. For those already familiar with the phase one stories, they still offer deep backstory and insight into characters fans have already fallen in love with. So it's the best of both worlds. Now sticking with you, Emily, this phase seems both very different than the last, yet very familiar. Can you speak to that? Yes, definitely intentional. The time is different, so it's supposed to be different. It had to fit within the larger era and our storytelling, but we did want recognizable touch points. We also wanted to show that this is an older, rougher time in the galaxy. The Jedi are almost at their height. Now, Zoraida, you've got the first adult novel in this phase with Convergence. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, given how this phase is both similar and different to phase one, how did you approach this novel? I approached Convergence by looking at the way that the story feels very broad. You know, you have Aram and Erno, and it is a half a decade long war with deep roots of anger and distrust between these two planets. It's affecting the galaxy around them, but it's personal because there are two heirs from each planet who say no more. Now it's our turn to figure out how to stop this war. And that's what makes it deeply personal because you see the war through their eyes and, and sort of how they're going to fix it. And hopefully we root for them till the very end. Now, can you tell us how the Forever War relates to the Path of the Open Hand? Yes, so the Forever War has been going on for five years, but paired with droughts, famine, literally fighting your neighbor across this corridor of space. You have the isolation because the hyperspace lanes are shutting down because of the war. It makes it feel like an eternity. And so when you have nowhere else to go, if somebody offers you gifts freely given, you just jump at this opportunity because at first it feels like a boon and like a good idea. And you don't realize that you're sort of getting ensnared into this like spider's web. And so that's how we see how the path works in the shadows. Now, let's talk about something that you love enough to wear it on your neck at this very moment. Let's talk about Axel Greylark. Yes, let's talk about it. Axel likes to be talked about. He's a charming but angry young man who's veering off the straight and narrow path, maybe toward a new path. Get it? Because it's a new path and we we're... Yeah, so tell us what drives this character and how he connects to the larger story. Axel Greylark is the son of one of the chancellors of the Republic, Kyung Greylark, and he is 
a very complicated person. He's driven by this deep bruise that he's never truly healed. So what if the person who has nurtured Axel has sort of encouraged him to scratch at this wound and like unleash chaos. And so the idea that he can never uphold the name of Greylark and what that means. So maybe he's going to do everything that is the opposite of perhaps what uh, his mother stands for. It's almost as if his fates are dueling. <laughs> now, this is also a love story. Can you speak to that? For me, Star Wars has always felt like one big love story. It wouldn't be possible with this the love story that literally changed the fate of a galaxy, right? Anakin and Padme, their love changed the world. For better or worse, you know, the idea of hope and love are really intertwined. And I felt like for specifically the love story between Iram and Arano, it's just a natural progression. Plus everybody, everybody loves a little bit of romance. Now we also meet Jedi Knight, Gela Natai, who seems very hard on herself. Tell us about her and how she relates to the other Jedi who seem to be a bit more measured. Yes. Gela is the kind of Jedi where she hasn't experienced what the Jedi mean through other people's eyes. And so she's going to be plopped into this war situation where she has to see that maybe not all people admire the Jedi the way that she does. And so it's, it's sort of like a crash course into getting street smart because all she's really known are the temples. And so here she meets Axel Greylark for like, the Jedi are not great. I don't like Jedi, but maybe I like you. And of course, that's just going to make her faith and her devotion stronger. Uh, but she still has to go through those trials. Now, Charles, speaking of touch points to the past, the blade number one shows us your, I'm not going to say your overall favorite, but probably up there in your top four of your characters, Porter Engel in his heyday. Taking a character and rolling them back this way in, in a prequel situation, really, for me, is all about defying reader expectations, thinking about what the readers think this character would be like, or should be like, and then kind of playing with it. Porter Angle, when we see him in phase one, is an older guy. He's kind of toward the end of his time. And it's very clear, even if he doesn't express it to other Jedi, that he's got a lot of PTSD from, from all of the things that he's done. When we roll back to the Blade, he's obviously 150 years younger. So it is him in his prime. And it's a story about how he begins to transition from this swash buckling lightsaber super duelist to being the person who has everything that we see him burdened with in phase one. So there's a lot of stuff in the blade that's going to feel very fresh and cool, but it's also, if you want the coolest lightsaber stuff you've ever seen in a comic book, you'll get that too. Now, Porter is known as a legendary Jedi duelist, as you just said. How do you translate that to the page so readers see what you see in your mind for him? I mean, this is really one of the biggest challenges. I thought of a lot of ways that that might manifest in a story, how they would use the saber in a way that was different from the way other Jedi use it, because honestly, most Jedi are pretty pretty great with their lightsabers. We see them do amazing things with their lightsabers all the time, so this needed to be at another level. But really, the way that it gets realized on the page has very little to do with me. It has to do with the artists who are drawing it, who are Marco Castiello and Jethro Morales, and they are doing a really astonishing job of bringing these ideas of what a swashbuckler would look like. I mean, who doesn't like lightsaber battles, right? So this is seeing those battles we've seen so many times done in, in ways that I hope are gonna feel pretty fresh and cool and, and uh, unique. Now with the Blade, we also meet Barash. Can you speak to their relationship? I can. So Barash is, is Porter's sister. The Jedi Temple has set them up as a team that goes and, and sort of solves problems out in the galaxy. But how she and Porter interact and the way they are together gets to the heart of both how they approach solving the problem and, and how things totally go haywire. They go to heck. Now for fans who have read your earlier work and for those who have read Into the Dark, we know of the Barash Vow. Yeah. As a writer, how do you manage expectations of fans who will put two and two together on this, but also maintain their excitement throughout the series? I have been very fortunate in my Star Wars writing career to be able to write stories that cross many, many timelines. I've, I've hit a lot of different spots, a lot of different places, and so I've been able to seed things in here and there, little bits and pieces of lore that I make up that hopefully at some point down the road I'll be able to explain. The Barash Vow is a big one of those. We first saw it in, I think, Darth Vader 3 of my run with Giuseppe Camicoli. So now we have a character named Barash in the Blade who, this is not gonna be a surprise, but is the source of the vow. I'm not gonna say that necessarily happens in the Blade, but like, you get a sense of how something like that could happen to her. It also feels really ominous, so I'm just gonna take that with grain of salt. It is <laughs> deeply ominous, zero question. That's on purpose. I love the joy you get when we start talking about how ominous and creepy things are and how they might take a terrible turn for the worse. It's suspenseful. You need a little tension, otherwise people are just gonna be bored. 
Charles was the Sith Lord all along. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You are the Palpatine, I love it. Now, Emily, we've also seen the release of Quest for the Hidden City, and it looks like some of the characters will carry over into Quest for Planet X. Is there anything you can say about that? Yes. In true High Republic fashion, there is a lot of connectivity. So fans will get to see Rupert and Das play very large roles in both books. And likewise, Jedi Salandra's show from Hidden City will next appear in the Battle of Jedi audio that comes out in January. So lots to come. Now the serialized fiction in Star Wars Insider plays a larger role in setting the stage for Jedi and what's to come. Who should we be paying attention to here? Definitely Kraden, since he also plays a role in the Marvel comics. I'd also keep an eye on Keth. We'll see him, or rather hear him, and Salandra in the Battle of Jedha audio, which is a linchpin moment for this phase. Okay, lightning round. I'm gonna ask you to give us three words to describe our current books and comics. Ready? Let's go. Zoraida, Path of Deceit. Brutal, <laughs> affirming, and spiritual. Ooh, Charles? Three words to describe Marvel's The High Republic comic series. How about epic, um, very epic in scope, beautiful, it's gorgeous, uh, and essential. I think that's one you gotta read for sure. Ooh. Emily, three words to describe Quest for the Hidden City. I was gonna say essential for that one. I'll keep it, but <laughs> I'll add mysterious and heartfelt and surprising. Hmm. Zoraida, three words for convergence. Romantic, chaotic, and deadly. Uh, Charles, three words for the blade. Lightsabers, lightsabers, and stew. Emily, three words for the High Republic adventures. An incredible ride. And I have three words. This was great. Now, <laughs> lastly, for all of you, who is the character that fans should keep their eyes on as we head into the next set of books and comics? Emily? Oh, I get to go first. Um, Marta, she was introduced in Tessa and Justina's Path of Deceit. We'll get to see even more of her in Path of Vengeance. I think she's a super compelling character trying to find herself and I love a coming of age story. So I think fans will really be interested to see more of her. Oh, and we love a row in this house. Oh, Zoraida, who should we keep an eye on in this next phase? Uh, Axel Greylark. I can't wait to read Cataclysm by Lydia King and see what is next for our young scoundrel. Oh, it's going to be so fascinating talking to this new generation of High Republic authors about crossing over those characters. Well, you've already read it, obviously, but... No, I haven't read no. it yet. I don't know what happens. You are coming back and we're going to discuss this in detail. Charles, who should we be on the lookout for? There is a character introduced at the end of The Blade Number 2. Her name is General Vice, and she is, is super cool and very important and is gonna definitely be somebody to keep an eye on in the future. Zoraida, I'm gonna ask you, what most excites you about this era? The thing that most excites me is being able to see what the Republic looks like during this time period and the way that the Jedi are interacting with the Republic, the way that they're gonna face the path of the open hand. There's just so much to really dive into and it's, it's really exciting being able to see how all the authors interpret all of these storylines. It's so great to be here with y'all and I look forward to phase two, all of the things that you all will bring to it. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Can you believe this higher public holiday is coming to a close already? No, I can't. And neither should you because it's time to unwrap those higher public exclusives. There's no way I'd leave y'all without some hot new holiday exclusives. The first gift I have for you loyal High Republic viewers is the cover for Dark Horse's High Republic Adventures number three. The issue features Padawan Sav Malagon, double-bladed saber ablaze, facing off against some fiery debris. Written by Daniel Jose Older, with art by Tony Bruno, colored by Michael Atia, and main cover art by Harvey Tullybow, which, if you ask me, is the perfect way to ring in the new year. What's that? Another Sluicy to reveal? Okay. How about the interior pages from Marvel's The High Republic number three, which flash back to Tay Sarek when he was one of the Guardians of the Wills, question is, what happened? Why is he no longer a guardian? Well, you'll just have to read the issue for yourself when it hits stands on December 28th. But Marvel isn't stopping with one Prezi this year. They've got more. First up, there's a stunning Bingle variant for the High Republic number five, featuring Jedi Vildar Max striking a pose with his lightsaber. This Jedi means business, y'all, and you can add it to your growing High Republic collection when Marvel's The High Republic number five goes on sale February 8th, 2023. And if you want even more Vildar-related gifts, 
How about we rip off the wrapping paper on this Yannick Paquette main cover for the High Republic number six? This one features our guy Viljar Mack using the force to hold back some very heavy columns on Jetta. Find out why when this issue hits stores on March 8th. But wait. Yannick Paquette don't quit when it comes to gifts this episode because we've got another incredible cover for Marvel's High Republic number seven. This time with a group shot of the Twinkle Sisters, Vildar, Tay Sarek, and Maddie Cathley standing with Kraton outside the doors of Enlightenment. What are they looking at? Well, you'll just have to wait until March 22nd, like the rest of us. And we have one more present under the tree for you this year. Our last holiday gift is a brand new High Republic character encyclopedia. Written by Amy Raquel and Megan Krauss, this brand new book from DK Publishing is the comprehensive character encyclopedia, featuring over 250 characters from every phase of the High Republic. And if that wasn't enough, the legendarily luminous, fantastically fabulous, prolifically proficient painter Phil Noto designed an amazing cover for the book itself. And you can add this book to your ever-expanding High Republic collection when it comes out in 2023. <sighs> what a holiday feast for the High Republic. I cannot wait to dig into all of these in the new year. Speaking of bringing in the new year, I gotta get back to spending this higher public holiday with my friends and family. We'll be back in 2023 with a brand new episode of the Higher Public Show. Who knows, maybe we'll finally get to unwrap an all new studio for the show in 2023. Maybe, hopefully, a girl can wish. As always, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow Star Wars on all the social networks. For Light and Life, I'm Christina Ariel. See you next year, Higher Public fans.